Well, good evening. It's so good to be with you tonight. It's Thursday night. Tonight is the day of the saints. Thank you for joining us. I'm Derek and Velma Dett from Dynamic Life Ministries. It is just such an awesome pl privilege and a pleasure to be with you and to be streaming and broadcasting uh, out there tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Darling, it's so great to have you always with me. And it's just such a blessing to be together and just, just share the word of God and, and just be excited with what God is doing. So we just love you and appreciate you. And we thank God for, for the power of God Amen. and the joy of salvation in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Darling, don't you want to start an open prayer for us and just, just touch touch lives this morning, this evening as you pray and just Amen. wait on the Lord. Um, good evening, everyone. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father God. You gave me the word soar tonight, Lord. And, and all I saw is, was this eagle that decided to go higher. And, and as, as the wind was just pushing this eagle up, it became very quiet around this eagle. Lord, and that is what we ask tonight. Come and quiet whatever we have around us tonight, whatever is going on in our lives, whatever is, is our circumstances, Lord. Let us just come in your quietness and in your peace in tonight. And thank you, Father God, for everyone that tuned in. Thank you for, for, for your absolute grace on us tonight, Lord. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Amen. You know, it's just so good to, to, to know that God loves us so much. He's a God that never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's ever going to be our friend. Amen. So tonight, darling, why don't you just share a little bit about what God wants us to do to, you know, the topic tonight is stand up and stand out. Amen. And what is it that God wants us to do as the church of God to stand up and stand out? You know, I think for myself, I was just, as we were just talking about it and preparing and I was sitting at God's feet, I think this was the hardest thing for me of being a child of God to to stand out. Um, I remember one day at a meeting, I was um, I'm a very tall person. For women, the usual woman takes me under my shoulder. I'm very short, I'm very tall. And um, I was at a meeting and this woman that was um, preaching that morning she was so small they had to bring a little wooden cup, a, a, a box in so that she can see over the pulpit because the pulpit wow. was built in. And um, she called us out for a specific ministry that morning that she felt Holy Spirit wanted to do. And I was standing there and everyone was so small against me. And I started squinching away mm. in the... In the queue because I just felt I was standing out like a sore thumb and I was actually starting to move into the second row of women and this small woman jumped off that pulpit that morning and she ran up to me and she grabbed me and she pulled me three four four steps in front of all the rows and she said stop doing that amen God has called you amen. to stand out he has called you to make a stand for him and stop quenching away. And that day I realized, you know, God makes you the way he makes you. He creates you unique Amen. as you should be. But sometimes we are scared to stand out. We are scared to take a stand and say, this is who God created me. And be who God called you to be. Yeah, Amen. You know, when we're talking about standing up and standing out, so often, so many Christians, they see things that are exceptional when somebody stands up or stands out. And yet, when I look at the scripture, darling, and I see what God says to the church, what we have, have labeled as exceptional and what we've labeled as maybe radical or fanatical is the, should be the norm for the church. Just, yeah. now, here's an example of, of, of current day events. Now, if you're in South Africa, you'll know we have a great chief justice of our judicial system, Mahen Mahen. And you know, he's been standing up 
and standing out for what he believes Glory. without compromise, mm. without apology, without saying, I'm sorry I said this and I didn't mean to offend. He just said what he needed to say Amen. with a pure heart. Amen. And you see, many people, and, and I watched it as there was many comments on social media about people talking about, wow, what a man. And he is what a man. But my question was, and, and I felt sad in my heart, because where are the rest of the church? Because we've made something that should be supernaturally natural, we've made it extraordinary. Yeah. And, you know, it's like signs one is a miracle, Tony. The Bible says that the preaching of the gospel, the ministering of his word, the life of the church, the saints of God, Amen. should have following them, tailing them, signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. And yet when we, we don't see a lot of miracles, we don't see a lot of signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. So now when they come and they happen to, ha to, to trans transcend, then everyone says, wow. You see, we're so accustomed to not seeing the power of God that we get surprised when we do see the power of God. Mm -hmm. And that's not what God wants in our lives, church. You see, the day of the saints tonight, as we're talking about the saints, there's a move of God that's happening around the world right now. It's got no name on it. It's got nobody's denomination or tag on it. On. It's got nobody's flavor to it. It's got nobody's opinion behind it. It Amen. is a pure move of the Spirit of God. Amen. Where God wants the saints, the, the church of God, Amen. those that are called out by God to do mighty exploits. Amen. Jesus himself, darling, said this, I'm going to the Father and I'm sending you the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Mm. And greater works will you do than these. Amen. And I'm asking the question tonight, not to be critical and not to be an accuser, but I'm asking the question tonight simply, where are or where is the church of God in the power of signs, wonders, and miracles? And the question I want to ask you tonight, and please, if you're online with us, please send me a text, send me a comment. I'd love you to, to have an input tonight. Yes. Where is the church? You see, when we talk about standing up and standing out, we're going to be recognized for the right thing. We're going to be recognized for those that will dare, and I use the word dare, dare to confess the Lord Jesus Christ and the works of God to a lost and a dying world. Yeah, and the word that just pops into my heart right now is excuses. Okay. Because at one stage the Lord said to me, I've called you, and I had every excuse. Why not to do it? Why not to do it? Yeah. And at one stage, a woman at a, 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 a camp, she walked up to me and she placed a, a mic in my hand. And the moment I touched that mic, the spirit hit me and I was lying there and God started showing me what the call was. Amen. So Amen. I think we are as church many times at a place where we are full of excuses. Yeah. Sorry, but that is, uh, that was Reality me. is reality. Yeah. You know, you see, one of the things, darling, if I look at the scripture, let's look at some words tonight. Let's look at some mm. scriptural foundation for standing up, standing out. Yeah. And I want to challenge you. You know, some people are fearful of public speaking. Mm. Some people, well, I want to just stay in the background. I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be heard. Sometimes... God tells us just to take a, a bit of a back seat and just watch yeah. a little bit. But when God does tell us to speak up, stand up or stand out, mm. are we willing to be obedient? Yeah. Now, in Romans, let's go to the first scripture tonight. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. It's not even exceptional. Presenting ourselves as instruments of God's blessing in God's hand is a reasonable service, the Bible says. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds yep. 
that we may prove. I love that. That we may prove. <laughs> what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? Amen. You see, church, the world is looking for a solution. Many people use the name of the Lord in, in a joke. They use the name of the Lord to blaspheme. And the Bible tells us that we are to prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God mm. by living a non-compromised life. Mm. And when you spoke about excuses just now, <laughs> we're talking yeah. about living a, a compromise. Mm. You know, I posted something on Facebook this morning, and, and please go and have a look at that post. That was quite a strong word. That was a bang word. You know, that was one of those bunker bombs that's going to go off in your head, go off in your heart. But you know, if we really analyze it, instead of getting defensive, you see, most mm. of the time, as the church, we get too defensive. If, a, if somebody in the street walks up to us or walks up to you and I tonight and says, listen, are you a Christian? Because I don't believe in Jesus. We get so defensive. Instead of just sitting that guy down or standing and having a conversation with that person in the spirit of love, joy, and peace. Because you see, we should not be ashamed or not be unable to defend the scriptures. But you know what? When we don't know the scriptures, when we're not sure of it, we're a little bit scared and we pull back and we go hide. And I think that's been the problem in the church. You see, I want to apologize to all of you tonight as saints of God out there in the marketplace. I want to apologize to you tonight for two things. Number one, the clergy, the ministers, told you for years, you are lay, laity, you are congregants. Your job is to support the minister. Mm. You're to pay your tithes, show up at church, come and just make him look good or her look good. And the church, darling, got conditioned mm. into that mindset. Yep. And that's a mindset of religion. Yeah. That's a mindset of monkey see. I wouldn't mind even if you followed that monkey and did what he did, you're just following the monkey. Mm. So, so what I'm saying tonight, you see the Bible says, I don't want you to be a congregant, to be a pew warmer or a fence sitter. Yeah. Jesus said the, the fivefold ministry, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the prophet and the apostle, they are set in the church to be gifts to the church, to empower and equip the church, not the other way around. And God don't force anyone to to do what he wants to do. The day that I said, Lord, I will be a prophet for the nation. I accept the mantle. Yeah. That day changed my whole life. Amen. Amen. But because before that I was fighting him with excuses. Mm -hmm. But that day when I stepped up and I said, Lord, your way. Yeah. Not what I want. <laughs> What you want. Amen. You see, many, many times, we need to be a trained, we need to be equipped. Mm. That's actually why we fellowship and we congregate together. So that we can learn and be trained and equipped. Amen. But then, what do we do once we've got that equipment? Yeah. What do we do once we've got those tools? Yep. We should go out there and use them. Amen. You know, I want to tell you, there's some folk that will understand racing a car. Now, I, 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 you know, I still love, give me anything with a bit of speed and a little bit of dare in it. Hey, I, I, I just light up. I mean, I just come alive, praise God. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to sit. I used to be, when I was in my, 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 my teenage years, I had a friend that his dad owned a, a motor garage. And they built some go-karts and they went to the track on, on the weekend and they raced the go-karts with a whole lot of other guys. And one day he said to me, don't you want to come with him? You can be in the pits and help out in the pits. Well, you know, like any young boy, hey, I'm, going, I'm going to a racetrack. I'm going to be in the pit lane. Oh, man, I was excited. And I went a couple of weeks with him in the pit lane and it was great fun. But I want to tell you, I sat on that pit wall and I watched my friend and, and another guy who drove the two uh, go-karts for, for the... For his dad, see, and they drove round and around, and I was like, "Man, this is exciting!" But I sat on the wall, oh. and I listened to the to the race engineer, 
You know, even back in those days, they had a race engineer, a little little three-man team, you know, who came on the back of a trailer, nothing fancy, but they had a race engineer. Oh, Amen. And he would draw on a chalkboard the, the track, and he'd draw the racing line, and he'd put in all where you brake, where you accelerate, where you turn in, where you don't do this, where you don't do that. And I used to sit there and listen. And I, it, it got to me that, hey, I want to try that. I want to get up and do that. And then one day, the dad said to me after prac after the race was finished and everyone was packing up and, and what have you, and the track wasn't yet closed, he said to me, how would you like to take the cart out and go down the track? Oh, come on. I mean, I was <laughs> like I was like a four-year-old in a candy shop, darling. I was just, I couldn't wait. You know, put on the helmet, the gloves. I was off like a rocket crane. <laughs> and I got on that track and I remembered what that, those those diagrams on the on that chalkboard. And, and I tried to do this and do that and I just had so much fun. I was... Oh, I mean, my heart was pounding, my arms were aching, because I, I want to tell you, in those days, that's direct steering, and, and it's anal if you're not used to it. But I was having so much fun, see? And when we got back in, he came up to me with a board and had a little stopwatch on the top of the board. He said, you know, that's not bad. Have you ever raced before? And I said, no, I've never raced. You see, what happened, I had sat for a season in a pit lane wanting to race and learning. And the minute he said, go and do it, I was so excited to go do it. I haven't stopped. Mm. Now, you know, if you, take, if you take a horse and you put a horse in a starting gate at a racetrack, that horse is waiting for one thing. It's waiting for you to open those front gates right, and yeah. it's going to charge out of there like a rocket, praise God. <laughs> now, what about the church? You see, we were taught, and the clergy taught the church wrong, that you must come and sit. You must come and fill the pew so he feels good, he feels important. You see, I'm not important. I, it's not about me and it's not about you, darling. It's about Jesus. Amen. And I want to say this. I want to equip the saints. And I know sometimes some of the folk that are with us, you might think I get a bit hard with you and I push you a little hard and I prod you a little bit. Well, you know why? Because I don't want you in the pit lane. Amen. I don't want you on the bench. I want you in the game, praise God. Amen. I want you up and going like a rocket. Mm -hmm. I want the stable doors to open. And I want you to go zooting out of there to go and touch Amen. lives with the power of God because you've Amen. learned something. Amen. Otherwise, we just get you know this, this mushy little Christian sleeping on a bench. And that's not what God wants. Mm -hmm. so, so I want to say this tonight, that God wants us not to be conformed to that image because mm -mm. it's the wrong image, see? And God wants us to put on a new mindset that says, I can. Amen. Now, those that are in the ministry team with us here at Dynamic Life Ministries, you know I won't ever stop you from doing something that you want to do for God. Amen. If you want to go and visit the old age home and pray for the old folk, go. If you want to go to schools and have a school ministry and minister with the youth, Amen. go. We'll pray for you. We'll bless you. Amen. We'll cover you. We'll support you. Because, you see, you can go where I can't go. Mm. You can minister in your marketplace. Mm. You can minister in your office. You can minister in your supermarket on, where I'm not there. Amen. And I want you to know tonight that God wants you to go, praise God. Amen. God wants you to be equipped and empowered, hallelujah, so that we can go as the body of Christ. And that's the move that God's doing. That's the move that's rising up right now across the world. Amen. The saints of God, I want to say this. I speak to a lot of people that are not in a local fellowship or a local assembly. And one of the questions I'm always intrigued and I always want to know why are you not there? What is it? What caused you to stay away from, from the assembly of the believers? And can you can I tell you what they tell me? There's two main main causes. Now I'm, obviously I'm generalizing and I'm I'm putting them into two very broad categories. Number one, they didn't feel important. They weren't recognized. Okay. They didn't feel they didn't feel they were doing anything. They were just sitting in a pew. Number two, when they wanted to do something for God, they got shot down, hammered down, and put a lid on them. Oh. And church, I want to tell you, if that's you tonight, I I I want to apologize to you. If that's you tonight, I'm sorry that the church, the clergy, the ministry, did that to you tonight because that's not God. I want. You know, I want every member of the body of Christ, everyone on team, to be active in the ministry. I want, you know, I don't mind. I, I love it when, 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 when members of the of the ministry, the saints have got phony. Derek, I was counselling this guy. 
and you know i'm not sure how to handle this and can you help me with this hey i will never stop doing that because it tells me you're out there doing something Amen. don't don't phone me please don't phone me and say derek there's a guy next door that's sick rather phone me and say derek i'm with the guy next door and we're praying <laughs> will you join me in prayer hallelujah you see what i'm saying that's the saints of god that's what god wants so god says listen we're not of this world. We're certainly in it. We didn't escape it. We suffer the same pains, the same frustrations, the same hurt mm. as everybody else. We're not, we're, not, we're not separated from it. We didn't get excluded from it. But God gave us the power of the Holy Spirit to walk through it in victory. Yeah, and, and what, what's interesting is that thing that irritates you the most in the ministry. Say uh, you battle with the sound, or the coffee is not lacquer, yeah. or the loo is, is not pretty. Yeah, that is something. Yeah, it's many times the thing that irritates you the most that's actually God telling you, my child, go and do something, do something about, about it. it. Amen. <laughs> because Amen. Uh, we were at a, a, a women's um, retreat for a weekend, and right in front of the board where the, news, uh, the notes for singing were running, there was a, 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 a beautiful feature running there, but it was actually in the way for us not to sing lacquer that weekend. And while we were busy praising and worshipping the Friday night, the woman walked up to me and said, that irritates me so much, I can't praise and worship. And instead of me getting angry or frustrated with her, I said, Sonny, can you please come in at 7 tomorrow morning? Our whole team is here that works with the decor. And then you can come and help us and just move that thing. Just remind the team we have a lot on our plate right now. That morning at 7 o'clock that Sunday was there. And she moved it and we had an awesome weekend. Amen. Amen. And that showed to me that that thing that sometimes caught your eye, that's where God needs to you. fix it. Yep. Yeah, just do something. You see, when we look at God saying, be separate, don't be conformed to this world. Yeah. God wants us to be the solution carrier. Yeah. yeah, the world's got problems. The world's moaning. I mean, I want to ask you, in your, if you're on a group of your community, like the people who live in Centurion, if you post tonight on that group and just ask for a technique, how many people on this group can testify that even with all this COVID-19, all this lockdown, all this regulation, all this mess, all this fear, all this anxiety, who can testify that God has done something for them that's good? Amen. I would just wonder. I'm, I'm, I must be honest with you. I'd love to post that. Unfortunately, I can't post on that group. They blocked me for a while because they don't like my, my, my radical statement. But that's okay. God bless you. But somebody else, please post. Please ask that question. What has God done? You see, that's standing out. In the world system, oftentimes when we see something mighty that God does for us, we put that aside or, or put that down to, well, that's just coincidence or my good luck or my good fortune. It's not. You see, standing out doesn't have to be radical like Derek. But standing out means that we give God the honor, the praise and the glory whenever we can. That's standing out. Amen. That's being able to say something when everybody else is saying what is common, what is normal. You see, I don't mind when we go for a bride with some people and culturally, you know, when we have brides, the woman goes sit this side and the men go sit that side. And what Velma and I sometimes do, we, we, we'll grab a chair and we'll go between the two groups, the men on the left, the woman on the right, and we'll put the two chairs down right in the middle and the two of us will just sit there. Mm. and we'll just do that <laughs> and we'll just talk together and after a couple of minutes you know what you see other couples starting to come and sit in the middle so the husband and the wife are not in two separate Amen. functions they come into the same function that's being different Amen. that's leading by an example mm. that's what God wants the saints of God to do Amen. to stand up and stand out I'm Amen. not talking I'm not asking you tonight unless God tells you to go and stand on a soapbox in the middle of the corner take your Bible and go start preaching in the corner asking you to do that church if god tells you to do that please do it but that's not what i'm talking about ne necessarily 
I'd love you to do it. I really would because I think that's, that's great for the kingdom. But, you know, the Bible says if you confess me before man, Jesus said, I'll confess you before the Father. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to preach, speak, prophesy, minister as the Lord leads. And while we there, let's talk a little bit about what God says. We're the light. We all quote that scripture. We're the light. Let your light shine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. <laughs> well, I don't care if you're a, if you're a one watt LED. It's a light. Let it Amen. shine. Doesn't matter what we do tonight, church. Let that light shine. Amen. I'm going to let it shine. Amen. Now, remember that, that people used to wear those little bangles and some still do. What would Jesus do? Well, I want to ask you, I, I know what Jesus would do. What would you do? It's great to know what Jesus is going to do, but what would you do? What would I do? You see, the Bible says in, in Philippians 2, in verse 15, it says in verse 14, in fact, let's go there because I love the scripture as well. I love all the scripture. It says, do all things without murmuring and without disputing. Oh dear Jesus, do all things. Do all things without murmuring. That you may be blameless and harmless sons of God. Blameless and harmless sons of God. When? When you do everything without memory. Amen? And without fault. In the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. He, so God tells us, church, we're in the world. We're not of it. And it's a crooked and a perverse generation. In which you shine as light in the world. Do we shine as light? Do we shine tonight in the spirit as lights of God in the marketplace, in our office, where we interact with people? Do we shine as light? Do we stand up and stand out? Do we do what God's called us to do despite the circumstances, despite maybe the ridicule, Maybe you've got an unsaved boss and you think, well, if I speak too, too radically for Christianity, he's going to attack me. He can't. Because the Bible says when you, when you confess God before man, he'll confess you before the Father. Yeah, yeah. And you'll get God's blessing on your life. Yeah. It's not about man's blessing, love you. It's about God's blessing. Yeah, yeah. So what are we going to do that makes us stand out and stand out? Let's look at some, some characters in the Bible Amen. that stood up and stood out. Yep. There's some mighty characters in the Bible. And you know, if God wrote another book of Acts for 2020, would you and I be in that book of Acts? Come on. For baby. Centurion, for your city, for your town, wherever you are tonight, would you be in that book of Acts? Amen. For being normal in Christ, having put on Christ, having denied our own life, and putting on Christ. You know, I can think of a lot of examples of men of women of God in the Bible that stood up and stood out. Amen. So, and they weren't necessarily real radicals. They just did what God called them to do. But you see, they knew. They knew mm. who was their God. Amen. They knew how to do mighty exploits. Not because they were good. Not because they were superman or superwoman. But they just knew who was their God. Amen. Let's take the first one that I want to just bring to example. Let's take David. David was a shepherd boy at home looking after the sheep. But remember before that he was anointed to be a man of God, man of great valor, man of great stature. But he was at home with the sheep. And his dad said, won't you go to your brothers that are in the army, won't you go in and check how they're doing, take them some food, take them some provision, and go and check on them and come back and tell me. So he went to the military camp where, the, where they were fighting the Philistines on a natural assignment. And all the other men and his brothers who were older than him were fearful of that Philistine giant, Goliath. And he stood out. He didn't wear swords or armor. Uh -uh. He didn't try to fight like they fought because they weren't fighting. They were cowards. And he went down to that little brook with his slingshot and a couple of stones and he stood out and he killed Goliath. You know, when we started this program, one of the taglines on, on the Day of the Saints broadcast is this. One match will start an inferno. One saint will start a revival. Amen. Be that saint. Amen. David was that saint. 
Amen. David was that little guy with one stone in a slingshot that took down Goliath and settled it once and for all. No. And there's many other examples, darling, in the in the Bible. Amen. Can you think of any right now that would just just be an example? See, it's not great men and God, not the great TV preachers, not the great TV and tele evangelists, not the guys on on Praise the Lord and TBN and all those networks. And they, those guys are doing some great stuff. It's not the pastors of the mega church. It's not the international speakers and apostles. And they're doing great stuff. But God's looking for you tonight. One saint mm. to start one fire of revival. Yes, amen. I love Gideon. Um, I know that in English it's Gideon. Yeah. Um, because my dad's name was um, Gideon. But what's so amazing is he <laughs> immediately came with the excuse. But God didn't allow him. He said to him, you mighty man of fearless courage. Amen. That's fearless <laughs> courage. That's how he started the conversation. I think even if you were walking a little bit in, in um, and not straight up, you will sort of pull back and, Amen. and get it together. And he was also testing in a sense, did he really hear God, you know? Uh, he did the fleas and the wet and he, he did the whole thing with the Lord. Mm. And and God was so faithful that after Gideon was, did what God asked him to do, there was 40 years of peace. Amen. And he said to the Lord, we are the, the, the smallest um, tribe. He had really a few excuses. But isn't it amazing, the moment he stood up, God was just in it. Amen. God was just helping him. I, I, I also read um, Mary. The moment that the angel appeared to her, she wasn't married yet. She was a virgin. And God said, will you carry my boy? Amen. She wow. stood up and she said, have your way. You know, and sometimes we think, how can a, a poor shepherd boy, he can kill a giant. <laughs> Amen. I Amen. Say, we don't say he's poor, but you no. know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Just an ordinary. Ordinary. You see, yes. when we're born again, church, let me tell you tonight, you're not ordinary. No. The Bible says we're peculiar, we're a royal nation, a holy priesthood. We're not normal no more. And if you want to act normal, you're disobeying what God's done. You're denying the power of God in our lives when we want to act normal. God don't, don't want us to be normal. The best thing is. In Ephesians 1, verse 17 to 21, it's the same power. Come on, there was what? Jesus! Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Amen. We can't fail, church. Uh -uh. If we just believe, dare Amen. to believe. Amen. Yeah. You know, military <laughs> units, special air services, their motto is who dares win. Amen. Can you dare tonight? If you want to win, dare yourself to do it. Just do it. Who dares win? Amen. Can't be normal, church. Uh -oh. I can't be normal if I try. <laughs> it's like saying to Derek, be quiet. I can't be quiet if I try. Because it's not normal to be quiet. <laughs> it's normal to shout and scream and praise God. Because the same power that rose Jesus from the <laughs> dead dwelleth in Amen. us richly. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's enough to get excited. Just that alone is not to get it done. Don't be moanful. Don't mope. Don't, yeah. don't cry. Don't bawl and fall. In all things, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good and his mercy endures forever. forever. There's so many scriptures that make us overcomers. There's so many scriptures that make us powerful in the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, you know, how do we, let's transition this to the practical for a moment. You might say, Jerry, that's all well and good for you ministers and you pastors and leaders and whatever. But what about me in the marketplace? How do I make this real and relevant? Well, you know, if I look at Moses and he led the people in the wilderness for 40 years and, and, and they, they got to a place and they were at the, the entrance of the promised land. And he sent out 12 spies, two by two. And five groups of those spies, 10 of them, saw the same things as Joshua and Caleb. And when they came back, the 10, the five groups of two, gave their report first. No, but listen, you don't understand there's giants. No, you don't understand we're oppressed. There's big grasshoppers. And there's high walls and there's giants. And I can imagine Caleb and Joe, 
They were sitting there, what did they see? We didn't see that. We saw the land of opportunity, milk and honey. Yeah, right. <laughs> you see, and I want to say this. They did to go against the testimony of the other ten. Amen. They could have, if they were carnal, kept quiet and said, God, they're right. We can't do this. We can't take this. But even when popular opinion was being presented, they stood against it. Now, what does that mean practically in the marketplace, Harry? You see, you can be sitting at a table with, with your work colleagues and with people. And some guy's about to tell a joke that's derogatory and smutty and under the belt and it demeans women. And you've heard that joke maybe before, so you know where that joke's going. Mm. Or you've just got a sense, you might not have heard it before, praise God, but you've got a sense where that thing's yeah. going, it's going south and it's going south pretty fast. Now, what do you do? Do you sit there and just say, well, I'm just going to close my ears? Or do you say, excuse me, John, Mary, or whoever that person is, please don't tell that joke. It's derogatory towards women. Mm. I'd rather you not tell that if you don't mind, because it's offensive. Mm. He might look at you funny. Oh. He might get a bit upset because he's embarrassing. Yep. But you stopped other people being prejudiced by that joke. It's the same with racism. Yeah. Church, I want to tell you, God is not impressed with racist jokes. Mm -mm. God's not impressed with racism. Because God doesn't see color. Mm -hmm. God doesn't see us in our denominational cultural context. God sees us either saved or to be saved. Amen. He looks at Amen. our heart. We're either his bride mm. or we're his fiance. And that's that. That's how God sees the people of the world. That's that. And we need to quit being derogatory, being scornful, and judgmental over other people. And so when that happens, I've lost some friends because I've stood up against racism. It's not on. Now, you know, you, get, you can't stop what people send you maybe on WhatsApp. But if you don't speak up and tell them that it's offensive to you, they're going to keep sending it to you. Yep. So how do you stand out? You don't blow the guy up in public. You're going to just send the guy or whoever it is a text and say, listen, thank you for that, but I really want to tell you I don't appreciate that type of humor. So next time you're going to send that out to 100 people, please leave me off your list because I love Jesus and Jesus loves everybody and I love everybody and I'd prefer you not to do that. See, that's standing up and standing out. Yep. And you know, sometimes that might just hit his conscience a little bit, especially if he's a Christian. Yeah. He might say, well, you know, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Mm. See, when we take people out in public, that's not the spirit of love either. Mm. But we need to stand up and stand out. So we need to be encouraged, number one, not to participate directly or indirectly in things that are carnal and of a fleshly nature. Mm. Yeah, you know, I think when I was at school and, and we in, in our days we used to still be allowed and it was almost encouraged to do initiations of the young young people coming into high school who were supposed to toughen them up, make them a man. If I think of some of the things that we did to those youngsters, that were done to us as well in initiation. Man, Lord, I'm sorry. I put my hand, I'm the first to put my paw up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I humiliated people. I hurt people's emotional, emotions. And I asked God, forgive me of that, Lord, because that was wrong. But you see, at the time when you're not a strong Christian and you don't understand all the things, you just go along for the ride. Mm. But you don't realize the damage you're doing to other people. Yeah. And so the first thing we need to do to stand up and stand out is be different. Yeah. Not for the sake of it. Not even to make a point and draw attention to ourselves. Mm -mm. But to be the integrity of the Lord Jesus Christ on earth. Amen. The second one. I believe we need to be persuaded. And I use the word persuaded. That we obey God rather than side with man. You spoke this week, darling, on obedience. And God yep. gave you God gave you some words and some principles around obedience. Yep. And you know, the Bible says it's better to obey than sacrifice. Yep. But obedience, you see, God can trust us when we're obedient. Mm. And when God says something in His Word that we know is right and righteous, are we obedient to that Word? Yeah. Or do we go along rather with popular opinion? Because we're scared of being ridiculed. Mm. 
We're scared of being set aside or set apart or pushed or, or pushed out of the to be class. Mm. You know, I want to say this. I want to be. I want to. I want. I'm persuaded that I'll obey God, and it's better to accommodate the things of God than the things of the world. Yep. And I'm going to stand against what the world's doing uh, for as long as it doesn't align itself to the word of God. Yeah. And that might not make me popular. That might make me an outcast. But you know, I'm prepared to pay that price. I, there's a lot of people that disagree with me. There's a lot of people that say, Derek, you, you're wrong. And that's okay. You're allowed to have an opinion. But you see, I'm prepared to stand up for what I believe. Not to go to war with you, not to fight with you. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And even over these broadcasts and these programs, Velma and I keep saying, if anyone wants to say anything to us and don't, doesn't agree with us, don't send a, an email to a hundred people. Don't go on your social media and speak about us negatively. Why don't you make an appointment, come and see us and sit down with us and have a nice cup of tea and let's talk it through and talk about it. Amen? Amen. Then we can find out where we are. and You know, sometimes we just see things slightly differently because we come from different backgrounds, different perspectives. Mm. But that's no reason to go to war with each other. That's no reason to fight and scream and, and blacklist each other and stay away and be upset and all twist and bend out of shape. And then tell me you're not offended. Oh, come on, get over yourself. You know, we've got, we've got to get ourselves to a place where we mature as Christians. We've got to mature to the place where when we're wrong, we can say, you know what, I was wrong. Dolly, how many times have we, since we've been married, have to say to each other, Dolly, I'm sorry. We say it quickly. In, in, in an instant. Yeah. Even if I do, even if it's not wrong, see, but it just cut across the flow. Hey, I'm sorry, love. Please forgive me. Yeah. See, it's not about who's right. Because yep. the relationship is more important than who's right. Yeah. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be wrong. Yeah. I want to be in a happy relationship. Amen. That's what counts. Amen. 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 It's in my Velcro. <laughs> he sticks closer than anything else. <laughs> so that's it. Ne next, next one I want to say, how do we stand out and how do we be different in the marketplace? Well, you know, we, we need to be like that Joshua and Caleb. Speaking the things of God even when it's not popular. Mm. Speaking the things of God with truth and love in our hearts. Yep. How, do you, how will this world know the truth unless you share it? How will the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord unless you glorify Him? Mm. I used the word this morning, the church has been camouflaged. Mm. Camouflage means you blend in. Yeah, you don't stand out. You don't, you're not seen. Uh -uh. And you know, we, we live in a country here in South Africa, folk, we live in a country that claims or professes to be 70 odd plus percent Christian. Mm. But where's the church? Everybody, there's a group attacking the Chief Justice for being strong in what he believes. And there's some Christians in your home, and well done for standing up for him in your home. Standing up in your family and reading the, 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 the literature or reading the social media posts and saying, wow, what a guy. But when you get into the office and somebody's talking because they don't like Chief Justice McQueen for what he says, do you stand up and say, well, you know what, I like that guy. I'm going to stand with him. I don't need you to protect me and stand next to me. I need you to protect me when I'm not there to protect myself. Mm. And that's what God, that's standing up and standing out. You know, today we were we were in a shop, and the merchant put the the figure in the machine. It was actually the owner of the shop, not one of his assistants, and he got the number wrong. And we put the uh, my card in the machine, and and we transacted the deal, and we tore off the paper, and it was wrong. He left a figure out, and I mean, it should have been wrong. Can we do it again, please? You see, I can walk away having scored some money because I did him in. Now, he, you might say, but, you know, Derek, he put the figures in, that's his loss. No, mm -mm. no, that's not integrity. See, that's not standing out for Jesus. And, and I said to him, you know, thank you. I said, this is wrong. Can we just give you the right amount, please? Now, 
see, you heard Velma and I in the shop talking about the Lord and while we were there, we were buying stuff for the ministry and doing what we did. He heard us talking about God. Mm. And then, two minutes later, we could have acted like the world and tried to score a couple of bucks out of him. Or we could have acted like Christians and blessed him and shown him his mistake. Mm. Amen. Amen. Now, you see, that's being different. That's standing up and standing out. It's just about being Christian. Amen. Reflecting Christ and Christ likeness. That's what God's calling in the day of the saints, brothers. Yes. He's calling the saints to stand up and be counted. Yes. Counted for what? Counted for the truth. Counted for Jesus. Amen. You know, I want to go against popularity when popularity goes against the word of God. Yeah. I want to go against popularity when popularity goes against the word of God. Mm. All because a thousand people want to do this. And the Bible says it's wrong. Which are we going to side with? Mm. By the way, just let, let me just help you with your math. If a thousand people against you want to go one way, and you and I line up with the word of God the other way, guess what? We still win because the Bible says you and I, you and God are a majority. Amen. So it doesn't matter about the numbers. That's just numbers. I want to be on his side. I want to be on the majority side. The Amen. side of God. Amen. Amen. So tonight, we want to, I want to encourage you into boldness in the Holy Ghost. Mm. So I'm not asking you to become radical, but I'm asking you to be bold in the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. I mean, tomorrow or over the weekend, maybe Saturday is a good day. Go and sit for five minutes. Here's, here's some homework for you as, as the church. Go and sit in a restaurant because they're open again, see? And go and look at people. Go and look at some folk. They look sad. They look, their shoulders are, are pushed down. They're looking terrible. Why don't you just go and encourage them? You don't know them. You might not never even see them again. But you see, being different to stand up is to go and sit down with them and say, Hi, listen. I couldn't help notice you're just looking so so heavy and, and, and so stressed. I'd love to just sit with you and I'd like to buy you that cup of coffee you're drinking and just make your day. I don't want to just make you happy. Amen. And you know that, that that's just gonna change a nation. Mm -hmm. That's gonna change a change a community when we when we do random acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. Paying it forward as some people would say. See we've got names for all of these things except saying it's because of God. We've we've labelled it secular mm. when it's actually an act of the joy and the fruit of the spirit mm. and we need to do those things how many times have you and i been in the checkout at, at a supermarket and the person in front of us maybe they're not as not as affluent as you are maybe they don't have as much financial blessing as you do and they've been putting their stuff down on the counter and they get to the end and they don't have enough money and now they have to, the, the teller's having to you know, back swipe some of the stuff and, 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 and drop the amount and they're leaving some stuff on the counter. And sometimes, you know what, church? It's maybe five rand, eight rand, seven rand. Somewhere there's not three, four hundred rand. It's a few rand. Do you know while they were walking around the shop, they were conscious of that money and they were only putting okay. things in the front of you. How many of us? I know I did it once and I was so, so hot, so in my heart. I went after those people with my grocery bag and I said, listen, I see you left some stuff behind. Please will you take out of my bag and take it home? See, because I got impatient. I'll be honest with you, I got impatient. Now I'm waiting for the teller to reverse all these things and I was in a hurry, see? What I should have done, and since that day I do it now, I said to the teller, listen, do me a favor. Just, sir, don't go. Ma'am, please don't go. Just ring that up again with my stuff and I'll pay for it and then give it to them, put it in their basket and they can go. That's what Jesus expects us to do, church. Amen. What's five bucks? What's seven bucks? What's ten bucks? We waste that on stuff we shouldn't buy anyway. And you know what you're doing to that person? You say, God bless you. I did this because I want to love you and share with you the love of God. God loves you so much that he cares for you, that he'll even take care of the little bit of extra that you need to put those groceries in your in your basket and take it out. Amen. See, when we all start doing that church, I tell you what, the people in our community will be a better place. The community will love because they'll know Jesus loves them. That's being different. That's standing out. Not to get your name in the paper. Not to get a book written after us. No. It's about Jesus, see. 
about the audience of one. Amen. Doing it for our King. Amen. Amen. So that's what that's tonight's program. Daring to stand up and cry out. Amen. There's a scripture I just want to read Please. in Luke 1 verse 37. For with God nothing is impossible. ever impossible. Amen. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of performance. Wow. So you are I not like going that. out alone. Amen. Now church tonight, I want to really ask you a radical favor. If you've been blessed tonight, Share this video. Amen. Share this post. Start a watch party. Amen. This, are you prepared to send this to all your friends? Whether they watch it or not is not up to you or up to me. Amen. But are you prepared to be the conduit to send it to your friends? Amen. When we broadcast on a Tuesday night, a Sunday, and a, 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 a Thursday night, and other programs that we do, are you watching? Are you bringing your friends around? You know, you know, sometimes when the Springboks are playing or your favorite football team's playing, we get all our monkeys together and we have a party. Mm -hmm. But when we're going to sit down with the Word, we don't invite our friends. Mm -hmm. Why, Pam? Why do we do that, church? Oh, we don't want to. You see, again, that was one of those religious things that we were taught or one of those things, cultural things we were taught. We don't talk about religion and politics. Well, I want to tell you, you better talk about Jesus. Amen. And if you're going to talk about Jesus, you're going to upset the Sanhedrin anyway. So you might as well just do it, you know. And just do it in love. But we've got to, we, we've got to change something in our, in our society. Because if we don't change it, what are we giving the next generation as an inheritance? What are we leaving for them if we mess it up now? Because they're not going to fix it. And then the generation behind them. I'm wanting to show now so that my grandchildren Amen. and my great great grandchildren Amen. and the great great greats after those greats Amen. have something great to have. Amen. Amen. Mm. We've got a job to do, church. I want to tell you, Stallion, I want to tell you, Racehorse, tonight. It's time when those gates in front of you open, it's time to go running on out and go win that race. You're the only one that can win your race. I can't win your race for you because I'm not running it, see? You're the only one that can win your race. Now, you might not, in the natural, come first in every race. But there's only one thing you've got to beat. You've got to beat your best and be better. Amen. Just beat your best and be better. One match will start an inferno. Amen. One saint will start a revival. Will you be that saint? Amen. Go and look at the revivals that started across the world. And see who started them. Two little old ladies. Hey. One crippled with arthritis and one blind. Right. Started one of the biggest revivals the world's ever seen. Amen. Will you be that saint tonight? Will you be that revivalist tonight that will start that revival? Maybe it's in your office. Yes. Maybe it's in where you work, in a factory. Yes. Maybe it's in a school where you teach. Yes. But will you be that saint that will start a revival? Amen. For the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you. See, the time's running away with us again, and we don't want to be on too long because I know people are data sensitive. Mm -hmm. But thank you for watching tonight. We want to just commend you in the Lord. I pray that you are touched and blessed. Amen. I pray that you will rise up. I want to speak life over you tonight. Mm. And church, I want you to know some of you that know us. You know that we love you. Amen. But sometimes as mom and dad, we got to be a little straight. Amen? Don't look at me. <laughs> sometimes we got to say it like it is, see? But because we say it like it is, doesn't mean we don't love you. Amen. And there's no condemnation. If we fail tonight, we're going to try again tomorrow. Amen. I mean, if I look at these broadcasts, when we started, with the little equipment that we've got, and and the little knowledge that I have of technical stuff. Man, we had some programs that you could hardly listen to because the sound was so bad. And I'd cry after the program. I was going, I'd sit and cry. I was so upset because I want excellence. And you know what? We persevered. And I've asked questions and looked at uh, technical videos and, and how do we fix this? And we're getting it right. Yeah. Amen. 
as slowly as we can, we're buying the equipment that we need to make it even better. Because I don't know, even tonight, where this video gets shared. Who se sends it to somebody. Maybe it'll change somebody's life. That I might not even get to meet, darling. Yeah. But you know what? The Word of God never falls void. Never returns yeah. void. But always comes back to the day which God sends it. So, I want to say to you tonight, let us make sure, let us make sure that we are what God wants us to be. Amen. Whenever He wants us to be. We love you tonight. I'm going to ask Zomba to pray and close. Thank you for, for watching. I'll be back now as Zomba closes. Thank you, Lord, as we ask Amen. you tonight. Like Esther stood up, Lord, and take a stand. Like Mordechai stood up and he, he took a stand. Like Moses stood up, Lord, and he took a stand, you, Lord. Jesus. Like Mary stood up and said, Here I am, Lord, do as you please. Thank you, Father. Lord, that is what we are calling forth over our nation, Lord, but also over your church, Lord. We ask, Lord, that we will arise, Lord, that we will get up, Lord, and that we will start doing something about those things that is irritating us, Lord, like a little stone in our foot, Lord, in our shoe. Lord, that we will stop and get that out, that we will start Thank doing you, a Jesus. difference where we go, Lord, that we will be like a fresh breath, Lord, that we will be a, a, a smell of awesomeness when we enter a place. Thank Lord, you, thank You're you great. that we will stand out, Lord, and not squinch away and stop doing what you have laid on our hearts, Lord. Thank you for a boldness that will come over each one that is tuned in, Lord. We love you, Lord, and we always want to be bring you glory and honor, even in the small things we do, Lord. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. Amen. Well, it's been so good having you uh, with us tonight. Thank you for joining us. Uh, just ask you to please help partner with us. Let's get the word of God out to as many people as we can in whatever time zone, country, or wherever they are. Thank you for being a friend of the ministry. Thank you for being a partner of the ministry. And thank you for being a participant in the ministry. It's all about Jesus, all about his love. So from Velma and I tonight, we love you, appreciate you, thank you, and say God bless you. Until we broadcast and see you again or see you at congregational meetings on Sunday, we love you and we appreciate you. Please sow into the ministry that there may be meat in the house. We love you and want to say good night and God bless you. Amen.